Welcome to this special episode of Tar Town Talks. After a successful first season and before the second season will premiere in early 2018, I'm proud to present this exclusive interview with Connor Oberst, the singer, songwriter, and frontman of Bright Eyes, Desiparacitos, and the Mystic Valley Band. Starting in 2013, a gloomy chapter was added to the story of Connor Oberst. All of a sudden, Oberst was falsely accused of having raped a fan at a show at Cat's Cradle in Carborough, North Carolina, 10 years earlier. The interview you're about to listen to, however, does not deal with the details of the accusation, the libel lawsuit that followed it, or how it affected the record sales of Oberst. Suffice to say that Oberst was undoubtedly innocent, and that his accuser completely retracted her story, admitting she lied to get attention. Instead, this interview, which was recorded earlier this year in Copenhagen, focuses on how to find peace in this world. Through meditation, marriage, soothing YouTube videos, getting older, and, especially for Oberst, through songwriting. After the false accusations, the mental state of Oberst declined. In his own words, Oberst went on tour with his old punk band Desaparecidos to outrun the nightmare he was living in. During the tour, however, a doctor had to check in on the health of Oberst as he was clearly not feeling well. He was diagnosed with unusually high blood pressure, a cyst was discovered on his brain, and the tour was cut short about a month. He then returned home to his native Nebraska after having lived for over a decade in New York. Back in Omaha, he went through the therapeutic recovery process of writing the songs that would appear on both the stripped-down album Ruminations and then the full band album Salutations. It is against this backdrop that the following conversation about finding peace took place. The first question for Connor Oberst is about which kind of moment he finds himself pursuing the most, the tranquil and peaceful moment or the excited and ecstatic moment? Hmm. I mean, I would say I, you know, like or seek out them, but both of them, um, at different occasions. I would say it's harder for me to get to the tranquil moment. You know, I'm not, usually I'm kind of mind's racing, and it's hard. I mean, I'm not the best at like just relaxing, and but I, but when it does happen, and you get to that moment of like peace, it's like. You know, I think it's probably even better than the exciting moment. It's pretty easy to get to ex- exciting yeah. moments, you know. Uh, who do you look for, uh, or who do you look to for inspiration in terms of keeping yourself sane and calm in this world? Well, um, you know, my father, I've always been impressed by, it's kind of like, no matter what happens, like in... Uh, like his life or like with my family or like any you know so many um like challenging things that happen through life it's like he always manages to like keep an even head you know you know he's a really like solid um person in that respect like he doesn't he doesn't um he doesn't get carried away like like I tend to do so I look up to him um a lot in that regard um, and you mentioned that your favorite feeling is finishing a song, right? Uh, do you recall a specific song of yours that uh, made you feel particularly good once it was finished? Like one that really came together? Uh-huh. Um, you know, they all feel pretty good. Um, I mean, I get sometimes I get asked, like, if you kind of had to pick, like, your favorite song that you yeah. wrote, which is, like, a weird question. Mm-hmm. But I always, my go-to answer is this song, um, called Cape Canaveral that's like on one yeah. of uh, my older records but I don't know something about that song I like singing that one because it's still there's parts of it that are still sort of like mysterious to me like why the words go together and yeah. like what it means I, that's what I like about it you know like it's, I kind of I can keep singing it and keep thinking about it and it doesn't doesn't wear out as much as like some of my other songs have to mm-hmm. me you know so yeah. that's good for some reason, Four Winds uh, comes to mind as one that must have felt really good. Yeah. Like, just yeah. the way it kicks off and the yeah. starting lyric and everything. Yeah, I like, um, yeah, I like that one still a lot. Like, the, I think the the language is, 
there's a lot of like movement in the in the words and how they're they're connected and in between like the way the one one verse goes into the next and um yeah it's kind of uh fast paced i guess so yeah that's 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 fun yeah uh do you ever use that awareness of how good it feels to finish a song uh to to pick yourself up like you like mm -hmm. oh i don't feel too good mm -hmm. i'm gonna write a song i mean to be honest like a lot of this this new record was um it was really you know because i had been um you know had to get off the road because i was like i had this like kind of weird health scare and i was like home and um you know just kind of in my house and it was really like, like winter time nebraska so i was just uh i don't know i really needed to do it i hadn't written in a while and i hadn't really felt like writing in a long time but when all the songs started to come it really um i don't know it was like exactly what i needed at the time mm -hmm. even even though it's like you listen to songs and they're not exactly um you know fun songs but uh <laughs> sure. but i think there was you know that to me it's always like when you're able to kind of put something down that makes sense to me and kind of helps clarify like things i'm thinking or feeling and like makes them you know sort of tangible then right. they then they have like you know they sort of have like less power over me you know like any of those like, like a lot of negative thoughts like if you can You know, it's like you take that and then you like, you know, you make something out of it that's, you know, hopefully like a value or at least feels like I was able to express something that that I needed to like clarify for myself. And so, yeah, yeah that something was a good came out of something. Yeah, really shitty or exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah so. Cool. Uh, so you're a married man now. To what extent does your wife take on the role of talking sense into you if you get too wound up? Yeah. Oh, I mean, she's yeah. That's another. I, sh I should have thought of her for your other question. Um, because <laughs> she's also like, I mean, she's got a great personality. Definitely like sort of a yin and yang thing where she's like always calm and like very like she's just like a really like low key calm person. I mean, sometimes she gets upset, but she's like yeah. really um. Yeah, she's just really chill and like very like I don't know. She like has like a beautiful garden and she's like patient and she like you know she's like kind of all the things that like I would have I can't do. You know, it's hard yeah. for me to sit still. It's hard for me to I don't know plan ahead too far and like or just like you know. Oh, yeah. So she's yeah she um she's really good about you know she's she's a, she has a very like calming effect on yeah. me which is nice not to get too private mm -hmm. or anything but was that part of what attracted uh what made you, you, attracted her to you yeah i know the I other way around um, i always get confused. right no i know you <laughs> um yeah i think so i mean you know it, it yeah absolutely it's a you know i think i i know for myself but i think everyone kind of universally like there's a part of you that's like wanting you know Like to to kind of go out and like the whole like adventure of the world, but if you find someone that like makes you feel like I don't know, kind of like safe and protected and like grounded, yeah, grounded exactly, you know. And so yeah, she does that for me, so that's that's been a big uh, big cool. plus. Uh, so I got to an interview slash uh, uh, a while ago or a few years ago. Oh, slash okay. Yeah. <laughs> And he told me uh, in the interview that he's still ultra insecure and that he's as nervous about going on stage as he's ever been. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, he's, I mean, you've played yeah. a lot of shows. He's yeah. played even more. And I was kind of surprised to hear that. Yeah. It's like, you'd think he would be like so confident walking on stage. But yeah. How, how, can you relate to that? Oh, for sure. I always, um, there's always, I mean, it's not like a long period of time, but I would say like, you know, five minutes or 10 minutes before it's time to go on. Yeah. Like it just, it's like a physical thing. You know, you just, you can feel like the adrenaline, you know, starts ramping up and, um, and like, yeah, it's like, it's not like, it's not as bad as like a panic attack, but no. it's like, you just, it's just like, I can feel like physiologically, like I can feel things like changing. And then I usually go out there and I kind of know 
after, I mean, sometimes, knock on wood, sometimes things can go wrong <laughs> at any time, but I usually, for me, it's like if I, once I get through like the first couple songs and, and I kind of like feel like, okay, I got this. And then the rest of the show is like, you know, that, that anxiety or whatever kind of it like goes away or yeah, lessens. Yeah, story, yeah. 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 Totally. Um, so the very first line on salutations in Too Little to Drink yeah. Seed is about meditation. Mm -hmm. About yeah. meditation. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. So then a few years ago in another interview, you talked about your experience uh, with meditation, how you might not become a full-on Buddhist. Mm -hmm. How's it going? Have you figured it all out like, the last <laughs> couple of years? No. Um, I mean, I, I, I have an uncle who is, um, you know, like a, I think he's actually a Buddhist monk or, you know, he's kind of been like ordained and he has like, you know, he does yoga and all the, and all the stuff. And so I've, I've meditated with him a lot and it's full, you know, it's definitely like traditional, like mindfulness meditation. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's really, really difficult for me, you know, just to like return to the breath and, and like, you know, it's like you're supposed to let, you're supposed to let the thoughts go by, but like not yeah. attached to them, you yeah. know, which is like, how do you do that? Um, so I've, I've still been working on it and then, yeah, like, like, like I'm not, I'm pretty bad at sleeping. Like I've got like a lot of times I've like pretty deep insomnia. And so like, yeah, I'll go onto like YouTube and like listen to weird, like sleep meditations, yeah. like where they try to like soothe you. And I mean, it's, it's just, I don't know. I, I, I usually have to sleep with like some, some kind of. I don't want really like silence, so I have to like have something like an earbud in with like either like an audio book or music. But music sometimes, sometimes I got if it's the right music, it can work. But yeah, it's 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 weirdly better when it's like a voice like yeah. talking. So sometimes I just put on weird like yeah. sleep things. Yeah. So have you discovered in this process any kind of like quick fix if you experience immediate stress or anxiety? You know, I mean, I do think it helps to like. I've been seeing this therapist like for like I mean last like I guess like year and a half maybe, mm -hmm. and she's the first one. I mean I've been to like those types of people many times in my life, but she's the first one that I like truly. I like I just I love her. She's been like so helpful and she's so cool. And um, yeah, she she's always encouraging me to like uh, to notice like throughout the day like anything that even small things but things that make you feel calm or things that start to make you feel anxious and so that you can like kind of start and then if, and when you do have something that makes you feel calm or a moment where you're like feeling good it's like to just kind of like try to absorb it like physically so that hopefully like the next time you're in a situation where i'm getting anxious i can i can like revert because so much of it is like you know it's like your ego is like such a sliver of like who you are, oh, yeah. you know, it's like your actual, your subconscious is like mostly who you are. So I kind of like training that to remember because it's really your ego that wants you to like freak out on something yeah. like your actual body wants you to be calm. So it's like, if you can, I mean, I think that's the whole trick is just trying to basically like, you know, ignore your ego and just like <laughs> let, you know, which is really hard to do, obviously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, focus on, like, just, like, feeling in your body. Like, that's another, like, trick um, they say is to, like, like, you know, whatever it is. Like, you can always feel any part of your body, like, if you just think about it. But just, like, focusing on something, like, physical on you as opposed to, like, oh, yeah. the laundry list of other thoughts that are going yeah, yeah. down. You know, so I've, I've tried that. I mean, with moderate degrees of success. But, yeah, I keep working. <laughs> yeah. So in this day and age when everyone apparently wants to become famous, uh, a lot of famous people talk about how, how overrated it is, yeah. not least in terms of like a privacy and all the crazy people you have to deal with. Yeah. Uh, but aside from providing better financial opportunities, uh, do you find that there is an overlooked aspect of fame that is actually positive and provides calm and stability to your life? Um, I don't know if I would say calm and stability, but I will say there is, you know, it's a very, it's a very like gratifying feeling when like, you know, setting aside the creeps and like the scare, you know, the terrifying yeah. people that there's plenty of, and you know, my music tends to like attract like, 
fair share of those. But but then there's like the t- you know then there's like the moment where it's like, you know, meet some kid on you know waiting outside the bus, and you can just tell like they're so they're so stoked, you know, and they're like you know whatever. Like sometimes they're like kind of like shaking, and like but you can I can usually immediately tell if it's like a sweet like they're just really nervous, oh, yeah. or if it's like this is a freaking he's like a <laughs> creep. But but like when. Yeah, just, like, if you meet someone, you know, and, like, I don't know, just to, like, give them a hug and, like, talk to them for a second and just, like, really makes their, you know, makes the day, like, big time. And, like, that's a that's a pretty cool, like, power to have, you know, to be able yeah. to, like, really make someone happy, you yeah. know, with, like, such little effort, oh, for sure. you know. So that's definitely, like, a, a good thing. Yeah, and to be able to, like, I don't know, like, kids will ask me about like who are like aspiring musicians and just feel like take a second and just kind of like, tell them what I think or like just basically tell them like you gotta keep writing songs you gotta keep just play for anyone who listen to you like that kind of just sort of like dad talk you know <laughs> pretty cool <Right. laughs> since you mentioned dad talk have you have you found that there's a correlation between growing older and being more at peace um I don't know. For me, it comes in in waves. Like, there's times when I was younger that I, I felt more calm. And then I'm definitely, you know, I think, I mean, obviously, like, the nature of growing old and ha- accumulating, like, experiences is, you know, in theory, they're less, they should be less impactful because you've seen it happen so many times, you know? Like, when something, when something happens the first time in your life, like falling in love or yeah. someone dying or whatever, you yeah. know, it seems it's like such, it's so intense. And then, you know, like, you know, now I just, I don't know. I guess it's kind of grown into more of a, more of a, it's not, it's not so acute, you know, it's more of like a, you know, existential panic. <laughs> of like, <laughs> of just like everything, you know, it's like everything that is, potentially terrible that could happen is probably going to happen whether to you or someone you love or a stranger like every all that stuff is happening so it's like almost like i guess like if i can trick my mind into realizing like you shouldn't spend your time being so afraid or like stressed out because it's already going to happen you know it's more about like getting into a mindset where you can like accept it and like you know do more productive you know try to balance the scales a little bit like yeah. dudes, dudes like you know provide more like kindness or something like put some other energy back into the world yeah. to like balance it out because being afraid and like you know freaking out or hiding under covers i mean like which is like what i you know would want to do in, in a lot of circumstances just doesn't really get you anywhere you know it's but more, do you regard uh uh as you grow older would you regard what you're experiencing as cynicism even though it's actually you're mm. as you're putting mm. it, you're tricking your mind into actually mm. uh, having a more positive outlook mm. but but it's the foundation of it cynicism um, that all the right that shit is gonna happen right right sort of put it yeah <laughs> i mean i think that i feel like that is just sort of pretty pretty much realism i mean i do i can fall victim to like cynicism too but that's more of like I don't know, it's more in, like, superficial ways, like, like, you know, you hear some, like, music or see some band, you're just like, oh, not this, not this again, really? Like, right. if you're gonna do this again? Yeah. Or, like, you know, or just feeling, like, just jaded, you know, basically not feeling, like, as grateful as I should for, like, things I have, you know? Like, that's pretty shitty, and I try not to let myself do that too much, you know what I mean? It's oh, like, for sure, yeah. It's, like, it's easy to talk shit on, like, everyone and, like, th- think everything's, like, lame and like been done before but like who want, i don't know i just don't want to be that guy i'd rather like give give everyone and everything like at least a chance you know and then if we needed if i decide it sucks then i'm you know then it's fine then i know it but <laughs> yeah, at least yeah. like it's like when you go into something when you go into a situation like ready to like hate on it which i think so many so many people do you know yeah and that's like i don't know it's just not like a good way to live I don't think so I remember Bill Maher talking about after Obama got elected that the whole country became a better place because America suddenly had a 
president that women thought was sexy. Mm -hmm. uh, and with Trump, it seems like the opposite is happening. Uh, do you agree with Bill Maher in the sense that whoever's president gets to determine the mood of the country? Absolutely. I mean, I am. I was so happy that I, I was going to be over here for like the inauguration because, you know, obviously, I mean, it's it, it's um it's unbelievable to me, like in like the literal sense, like yeah. it's hard to believe, and um, it's just so terrifying and embarrassing and like and just. And, like depressing. A lot of people have talked about how tame Bush suddenly seems by comparison to mm -hmm. Trump. Uh, do you have a follow up or two to when the president mm -hmm. talks about God up your sleeve? Um, I'm if it's I I'm willing to if it strikes. Um, yeah, I uh, yeah. The, do you feel an urge to write songs about not? I mean, specifically Trump. But yeah, Trump, yeah. Right? I mean, for me, like I, it's hard for me to. I mean, when the president talks to God is probably like the one example of like where I was just, I wanted, I, I felt like I had to put forward a message. That's why it's like not that good of a song. You know, it's like, oh. a, it's like a commercial for like ideas, <laughs> you know? Um, so when you listen back to Ruminations and Salutations in 10 years, uh, which versions of the songs do you expect you'll like more? I mean, I'm, I'm personally way more into Salutations, just because you know it's. I understand, and I it's I I, you know, it makes me feel good. Like the you know the way it kind of happened was I was making the band record, and then the label, this yeah. guy David By the like at the label really encouraged me to release the the recording. So he got me to do it, and I'm I'm happy that I did. And I think you know I think people like hearing it in those forms. Mm -hmm. But for me, you know, my favorite stuff is usually like other things that are happening like on the recordings oh, i like that's this great guitar part or i love right. this drum beat or i love like when jim james sings harmony with me you know and the records i mean it's got like the fleece brothers who are like yeah. my favorite band yeah. and <laughs> and then you know jim keltner who's like that was such an amazing experience more. yeah yeah so it's like you know kind of it's like doing it with all your friends and mm. being able to sort of borrow their superpowers and put them on your songs you know it's yeah. like so that's really cool so the band record is always going to be more fun to me yeah. but it's cool they both exist you know that was the conclusion of my interview with Connor Oberst I hope you enjoyed it and maybe even found some inspiration on how to keep calm in this crazy world this episode was produced recorded and edited by me Michael Elbeck and the theme tune was done by granddaddy's Jason Lytle Stay tuned for the second season of Torah Town Talks, and be sure to hit subscribe so you won't ever miss an episode. Thank you so much for listening.